The present treatment that we have is what we call symptomatic treatment. We, re we treat the symptom but not the disease because it seems that we, at the present we don't have a disease modifying drug that can slow down the progression of the disease because the disease is a progressive disease. Yes, there's no question that, that the present drug like the L-DOPA, dopamine agonist, monumental oxidase B inhibitors that we have developed do increase the quality of life. But unfortunately, this is not enough for the treatment of Parkinson's disease or any other neurodegenerative disease like Alzheimer's disease. Of course, there is always, uh, this is one of the major problems of the drug treatment. For example, long-term uh, L-DOPA treatment gives the problem of dyskinesia. Dopamine agonist in high concentration, then they can cause psychosis problem. And the monumental oxid B inhibitors are not necessarily as effective as L-DOPA, which is the gold standard drug treatment or dopamine agonist. But the MAOB inhibitors seem to be much safer and they have very little side effects actually. So we have actually been working, we developed the monumental oxid B inhibitor as elect, which is sold in also in Italy. And it seems that it's a possibility that this drug may be the first drug that may be disease modifying. It has neuroprotective activity in animal models and a major study was done in 113 centers called Adagio, which showed that it could be the first disease modifying effect. But unfortunately, FDA did not approve it as a disease modifying drug. So we are working on something completely new that I talk today. We have a new drug that can actually cause in three models of Parkinson's disease, complete neuros restoration of the dopamine neurons. It has both neuroprotective, it has anti-Parkinson activity, symptomatic effect, as well as it has what we call, I think is a major breakthrough, it has a neurorestorative activity. And we know how this neurorestoration occurs, because what it does is actually releases a number of neurotrophins that can cause uh, neurogenesis of the dopamine neuron. Because Parkinson's disease is not anymore purely a neurological disease, it's a neuropsychiatric disease. We already know that Parkinsonian patients have autonomic problem, heart problem. We know that they lose the sense of smell, and about 70 to 80 percent of Parkinsonian patients have predisposition to depression before the Parkinson disease starts. Then they have Parkinson disease, of course, and then 85 percent become demented. So the disease is moving like from here all the way into the brain to the frontal cortex. We don't know what it is. So we've been treating only the midbrain dopamine neurons. So, but, so the drugs that we are developing are it's called multi-target drugs. These drugs have neuroprotective, neurorestorative, they have antidepressant, true antidepressant activity, they have anti-Parkinson activity, and they have anti-dementia cognitive enhancing activity. We've designed them to be this way. So the trend is now moving away from monotherapy drug to multi-target drug. And the same thing, by the way, same thing in the treatment of AIDS, cancer, schizophrenia, depression, because these are such complex diseases, we were naive to think that one drug can do the thing. Same thing for the, this complex disease. We are just, uh, in a, we have about a year and a half to apply for an IND and uh, we've done a significant amount of work on this drug for the last four years, actually for five years, and we've done some of the major toxicity with the drug, we are quite happy about it, and we want to apply IND from FDA to be able to start phase one uh, clinical studies with this drug. So we, we're really very excited about this. I think if we really work hard and we get investment and the major drug companies will be interested, I would say maybe in five years because we really are uh, uh, very excited because we have learned a lot from our drug Azilect, Rasagilin, 
which we have introduced now in 50, 50, over 50 countries. We, it's, it has many properties of uh, azelect, otherwise known as rasagilin. So we think that we can go ahead much faster because we've done many, we've compared this drug with, with, uh, in terms of uh, its pharmacology to azelect. They seem to be very similar, but it has one, one very two very important things. First of all, it has neurorestorative activity that no other drug that we know are being developed that has this property. The drug has an antioxidant iron chelating activity because one of the pathology of Parkinson's disease and all neurodegenerative disease is that wherever the neuron dies, for some reason, iron accumulates and iron participates in oxidative stress. It produces radical. So our drug is an iron chelator radical scavenger is a monoamine oxidase A as well as monoamine oxidase B inhibitor and it also has this cholinesterous inhibitor moiety. So you can see why it has anti-Parkinson, anti-depressant and anti-Alzheimer or anti-dementia activity.